It's Andre for the High Performance Academy, and we're here with Simon from Motec, and we're actually here to talk to Simon about the race-grade product line that uh, Motec USA are producing. So, Simon, Motec's a fairly well well-known name all around the world for motorsport electronics. Tell us a little bit about the race-grade brand, particularly what what is it? Well, RaceGrade is a product line that we developed specifically to augment and improve the capabilities of the Motec product range. So when there was a hole in the product's capability, we wanted to fill it with a product that had the same level of quality that Motec presented. Because Motec Australia was not directly involved in that engineering effort, we had to put our own name on it. So RaceGrade really is a Motec USA design in the spirit of Motec Australia's capabilities, augmentation of the product line of Motec. So we're talking about a, a product line, obviously matching the same the same quality and just providing the, the additional parts, sensors, outputs, inputs, etc. that you guys in the USA saw the need for. Exactly. So when there was a need for, say, a different kind of connectivity or a different kind of product that filled a niche that people wanted and asked for, but maybe Australia couldn't respond for in a time, timely manner, we would try and come up with that product. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few of the products that Race Grade are producing, and one of the ones I've I've been watching for a few years is the Race Grade keypads. I mean, they're a really cool product used for interfacing with the Motec PDMs. So basically, the driver can control all of the functions of the car: headlights, wipers, interior lights, just about everything through the keypads. Now, can you tell us how that Race Grade keypad came to be? Yes, our survey of the market showed that keypads were something that were of a necessity. Uh, primarily in off-road, we were seeing a lot of people building these exorbitant panels with just pounds of wire coming off the back of it. And of course, all this power coming up to the back and leaving it. And with the onset of the introduction of the PDM, we could see that there was no longer a need to run all this wire all over the place. So it was our decision to try and look into a CAN bus based replacement for switches. And in researching all of the kinds of stuff that you can find out there came across this keypad manufacturer that builds stuff that is, I believe, IP67 or 68 resistant and is built specifically for heavy earth moving industries and all the other kinds of products that require a very consistent and capable device that can take punishment and abuse of all kinds of environments, including mining, like I said, heavy earth moving, and now motorsports. Just moving back, you said IP67, so that's a standard for, I believe it stands for ingress protection, so basically yes. ability to protect it from water, dust, yes. etc. Yes, that's correct. That's going to be really important in that off-road market that you, you mentioned. Yes, I believe it's 67 is the rating on the keypad, so that's water, splash, etc. and so on. The keypad is completely sealed from the front and the rear. When there's a connector plugged into it, it's, it's pretty impervious to any of the things that those guys can throw. And doing some of the repairs at Motec, I see dust that gets into places you'd never think they would make it. The keypads are going to stay clean inside. Okay, so now moving back to the, the way they integrate with the PDM, the, the PDM basically communicates via CAN, so as you said, that simplifies the wiring dramatically. We don't need a huge switch panel. So all of that keypad, all of those keys uh, are basically communicating to the PDM via CAN, simplifying everything? That's correct. There's a four-pin connector on the back of it, whether it's an eight-way keypad or a 15-way. And on the back of that keypad, we have power, ground, can high, can low. And all of that information, all of those lights that are on the keypad, all the actuations that you push into the keypad are all transmitted via can. Now, from an installation perspective as well as a setup perspective, that's, well, I think, what people need to also uh, keep in mind is it really simplifies and cuts down on that labor content of the job because it's just so easy to install these products, correct? That's correct. It's going to cut down on your wiring costs, not only physical labor, but less wires to run. And it's also going to simplify it so the skill level is, is less. Uh, trying to wind a large bundle of cables is, is an acquired skill. And to make a professional type of loom, if you've got less wires to deal with, it'll be easier to do. Now, this, this is a product that you've made under the race grade label, and uh, previously you were communicating to the PDM via a CAN gateway, so it wasn't direct. Can you explain a little bit about that CAN gateway? Absolutely. The original manufacturer of the keypad was a J1939 type product. So it's a heavy industry product that uses a different bus speed than Motex products. We typically use a one megabit and custom proprietary CAN messaging. J1939 runs at 250 kilobit. So the main purpose of the gateway was to bridge that. So we didn't have to try and move our whole bus down to one to the 250 key. Um, the absolute 
other function was to provide simplicity in how you program things. Original PDM software had very little keypad friendly capability in it. So by building this bridge with some inbuilt capability to move the messages that were pertinent to the key presses into the keypad over the bridge, uh, simplified the installation for people. Now we've gone one step further and you've simplified it even further. Motec Australia have actually bought this on as a product they're going to be selling and now that CAN gateway isn't a requirement. The PDM's been updated with some new software so it can communicate directly via CAN with the keypad, that's correct? That is correct. So in working with Motec Australia, this is a, a wonderful situation for us where race grade products have actually been graduated to the level of a Motec product. So these keypads are now being used by Motec Australia and they have developed a new PDM firmware to operate them directly. So the older keypads, while would require a firmware flash to make them compatible with the new firmware in the PDM, uh, are still capable of doing that job. And these new connectivity makes life simple. There's one CAN bus now. And the Motec software has many improvements to make the keypad stuff work nicely because now it's aware of keypads, whereas previously it was not. Sounds like the perfect, uh, perfect implementation of that product. Now you've got another couple of products we want to talk about and the first one you've got is your MAP sensor or manifold pressure sensor or actually any type of pressure sensor and you've made a small modification to what we normally see from these sensors. Can you tell us what you've done? Well, Motec East is our uh, company over in North Carolina and they have now contracted with a company to have an exclusive on these new pressure transducers. We're going to be offering them in 3000, 2000 and 150 PSIG in the first run. We will get to map sensors eventually, I'm certain, if uh, they prove to be popular, which we think they will be. It's a standard pressure transducer, but it is all stainless, and it's a complete stainless chamber, so we don't have any uh, fluid compatibility problems. Um, on your lower cost sensors, there's often a rubber seal or a Buna end seal or some other kind of Viton seal in there that can degrade depending on the working fluid. These are all completely wetted stainless laser welded pieces which is why there's a, still a bit of size to it compared to some of the smaller ones you see out there. But that makes the technology in this thing impervious to whatever fluid you're going to monitor with it. But the crowning jewel is what's on top, the little auto support connector. Something that you don't see unless you're buying a much higher level product from somebody else. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really unique for a sensor and your price point on them is, is not particularly high either. What, what sort of uh, price could we expect to be paying for these? We are anticipating about a $400 price point for these. Our standard pressure transducers are in the two to two and a half range. So to move to this newer product is a bit of a premium, but not nearly what the other people are selling them for, which is probably double that. So the advantages of the sensor with the Autosport connector on it for a high-end motorsport application, what do you see those advantages being? The major advantage is that you're using lighter connectivity. So if you're building a motorsport loom where you're using much lower, uh, smaller wire gauge, much lighter things, and you're going to the autosport light connectors, all in an effort to save those grams of weight that mean a difference when you add them all up. Um, that now directly connects. If you have a flying lead with some other connector on it, you're adding weight, and you're not in control of the flying lead because that usually comes from the manufacturer, and that's usually going to be a heavier gauge wire. This is going to allow you to run your light gauge stuff right to it, use a lighter connector, and also the locking capabilities of an Autosport are far superior to any other connector that are going to be used on here. The Metropac style connectors that you see on traditional pressure transducers, you know, it's, it's, it's a relatively decent lock, but it is a plastic connector, and it suffers those kinds of uh, problems. It's not going to be as impervious to heat as an Autosport is, and there's no positive clicking lock that you can verify visually and mechanically. So lighter weight, more reliability, it's obviously a great option if you're looking at that professional motorsport style. Hey, maybe it's not going to uh, be suitable for the, the weekend racer, but uh, great product. Now, lastly, let's move on to your 20 Hertz GPS product. So tell us a little bit about that 20 Hertz GPS. Motec Australia has always offered a GPS solution for our customers. It's been invaluable for things like in water sports and such where it's pretty hard to get a wheel speed. Um, we have been providing a 20 hertz solution for some period of time now. Um, our race grade GPS was a serial product and used a aviation grade GPS engine which would allow precise and repeatable uh, understanding of position. However, it suffered a couple of things. First of all, it was serial and uh, in the uh, new age of CAN, serial is a bit dark age. And then the other thing is that it didn't have any onboard understanding of time between venues and time between when you've last used it. So this new product has a battery backup in it, which we have added so that the GPS almanac can be stored in it and it can understand things and restart much faster, which is also important because being a true avionics piece, 
the thing is always going to unhook from the GPS constellation when there's obstructions. Whereas your lower grade stuff is going to kind of spoof your, your position and speed. This thing's going to go, nope, I'm not hooked up. Yes, I am. Which can be very important if you're using GPS in a critical system in an engine so, or a vehicle, I should say. So the capability of the thing is improved by having that battery in there. But far more important is that we've gone to CAN. So this is now a CAN-based product, still has the serial output, but has CAN high-low on the connector, allows you to plug right in. Same connector as our BR2s and all our other things, so same pinout. No one has to think about it if you're familiar with it. And allows you to get all the GPS data you need over a CAN bus to any device that can receive it. So basically with that integration with CAN bus, you're just bringing this product up to the, the modern age, getting rid of serial. I know personally I hate wiring anything that's serial in a car now with CAN being so prevalent. The, uh, the 20 hertz as well, that's going to give uh, slightly better accuracy in both position, speed, etc. So we can see some advantages with that. If a guy's already got a, an existing L10, 10 hertz GPS on his car, this isn't a product you'd sort of rush out and, and go and upgrade to right now? I would say not because in its, in its uh, first form, it's a 10 hertz piece. It's an upgrade to go to 20 hertz. So speed-wise, the L10 still has the same kind of update. Um, what you're going to see is an improvement over this is really the CAN bus. And being that the L10 is more of a consumer-grade level piece, it has the spoofing and the quick location awareness and such. So really, the guys who are really going to want this are either wanting it for CAN or they're wanting it because they need 20 hertz. And the 20 hertz is really going to improve on things like lap timing and positional information and, and chassis changing and speed that you just might not get with the 10 hertz updates. Hey look, Simon, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us. These uh, products, the race grade products, are really uh, interesting and innovative products, and I like what you guys are doing. Thanks a lot for coming along. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much for coming by. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.